condense this maybe to get you out of here. The first thing I want to do before we do anything else, you guys, is uh, to give Diamond and Carly a big round of applause. For <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Um, okay, can you just tag with me? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> our journey through the world of educational philosophy might best be summed up in the statement of Rollo May's Man Search for Himself. I think you've read this before. Does not the uncertainty of our time teach us the most important lesson of all? That the ultimate criteria are the honesty, integrity, courage, and love of a given moment of relatedness. So thank you for your patience with me and teaching me even more about teaching and learning. Your mutual respect for each other, your insightful writing discussions provided me with some moments that I will never forget. I suppose that we have all learned that we don't know it all. And hopefully you learned a little bit about the art of agreeing to disagree, a skill that will serve you well in the future. The world can be a hard place, make, most, make no mistake about it. And as Scott Peck said in his book, The Road Less Traveled, life is difficult. That doesn't mean that it isn't wonderful and full of exciting challenges. In this class, we looked at the philosophy of education through the eyes of a myriad of philosophers and philosophies, including the ancient Greeks, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. <coughs> you remember that? Spa, right? You never forget that who formed the framework for much of Western civilization's thinking about big ideas. Hopefully in some small way we emerged from the cave into the light of good and truth. However, we decided to find that in whose terms and with capital letters or not. As we searched and discussed, we honored each other with mutual respect. We sought the love of wisdom and the purpose of education. And you were exposed to the philosophies of many philosophers through now audience text, a variety of readings, films, fellow students' presentations, and discussions. Some ideas may have been familiar to you, others were new. In the end, I hope that you did some thinking on your own. What is a good life? What would a perfect society or a utopia look like? What are the criteria for being human? From Dewey to the existentialist, we looked at what, for what philosophy would fit us and even wondered what we might die for. Is there really a happy medium between the ideal and the real? Did Aristotle define happiness for you, or did you do that for yourself? Short of doing a little preaching here and lapsing into a sentimental moment, I urge you to keep in mind what Rollo May wrote. Look for honesty, integrity, and love in each moment of a relationship. Strive to make the world in which you live less violent, less cruel, less insensitive to pain. Learn from all sources and from others. Be a lifelong learner and be willing to grow. So what about education? What should a teacher stand for? <coughs> should he or she be willing to break the law to teach what, in his or her opinion, was the truth? And what exactly is the truth with a capital T? Is utilitarianism the philosophy that is currently guiding our society? Might Peter Singer be right? And how can we become authentic and self-actualized? And what exactly is enduring understanding? Are there questions worth debating and what is the best approach to present your ideas? Will you employ ethos, the ethics, the law, or pathos, emotion, aesthetics, the arts, or logos, logic, reason? or maybe a combination of all those rhetorical devices. How will you make your voice heard, present your side of an argument? Will your passion cause you suffering, and will the sacrifices you may have to make be worth it? These and many more constitute just some of the questions that you have to answer in your own mind, with your own thinking, finding your own truth and your own enlightenment. So what do you stand for? What are you willing to die for? What is your educational philosophy? <coughs> well, those of you who want to teach someday, be as fine a teacher as Mr. Tolson or Maury Schwartz. One of the most poignant scenes in dramatic literature comes at the end of Act Three in the play Our Town by Thornton Wilder. The main character, Emily, has died. And through the magic of drama, she returns to speak. On her way to return into her grave, she pauses on stage and delivers the following lines. She looks toward the stage manager and asks abruptly through her tears, 
Do any human beings ever realize life while they live it? Every, every minute? Stage manager says, no. And then pauses and says, the saints and poets maybe, they do some. So here's the saints and poets and even young educational philosophers. To paraphrase the, the poet Dylan Thomas, do not go gentle into the night. Seek the sun, look for the good in all things, love everything, forgive others and yourself, and be willing to take one more look at things. Have the courage to come out of the cave. Listen to the bird on your shoulder. Embrace the mystery. And most of all, enjoy every minute of the ride. Normally I'd end my little lecture and soliloquy that way, a couple other things. But as most of you know, this is my last day of teaching. So I hope you'll indulge me. I'm going to say just a few more things and I'll get you out of here. Sidney Cox wrote in his biography of Robert Frost, The Swinger of Birches, he wrote, we're after ultimates, but we have to content ourselves with individual composings in the main. There was a time when I yearned to have a standing ovation, whether it was after a speech or a game or something that I had done that I thought was particularly wonderful. But life has tried to teach me humility. And although I am a teacher, I can sometimes be a reluctant or even stubborn learner. So when the ovations did not occur, I was disappointed. I mistakenly thought a thunderous standing ovation would be the ultimate. <coughs> Recently, I have seen a few of my colleagues receive their well-earned standing ovation. It dawned on me just how much they absolutely deserved it. So not to be self-deprecating, but I realized that in comparison to their long and distinguished careers, my accomplishments paled in comparison. Then I had an aha moment. I had sought what I thought were ultimates, trophies, fame, material things, standing ovations. But the truth was that my ultimates were in the thousands of students that I've had the privilege to teach and coach. They were my individual composings, my composition. And maybe not Mr. Holland's opus, but they, you, are my ultimates. So today I can ride off headed to North Carolina with my head held high, not proud of me, but proud of you, what you will become, what a difference you will make in the world. And for that, I am most grateful and humbled. So remember the four agreements, impeccable speech, don't take things personally, don't make assumptions, do your best. Make every day your perfect day. As Jimmy Valvano, the coach, reminded us, laugh, cry, and think every day. Pursue your dreams and never, never give up. Nothing worth having is easy, or everyone would have it. Be kind. love one another. And now I have just one last request. I'd like you to take out your great debater's handout. If you don't have it, we have some extra copies. Stand up. This is where I'll get a standing ovation. <laughs> Who's the judge? The judge, the judge is, is God. God. Why is he God? Because he decides who wins and loses, not my opponent. Who's your opponent? The judge exists. 
Why doesn't he exist? Because he exists in mere dissenting voice to the truth I speak. Seek the truth. Seek the good. And no, you have no obligation to visit me on Tuesdays, but it would be nice if you ever did. You've been a terrific class. Godspeed. Best wishes to you all.